Grasslands cover a large area of the Australian continent. These range from native grasses to pasture and cropping land. Threatening life and property in our rural communities, grass fires are a danger we face every summer. Fanned by strong dry winds and fed by continuous fuel, grass fires can spread rapidly, almost instantly changing direction with the wind. To safely, effectively and efficiently contain these fires to the smallest possible area, firefighters must understand and carry out their role as part of a disciplined crew. Crews turning out to any fire must wear approved personal protective clothing appropriate to the task. This will include overalls or trousers and coat, helmet and boots. In addition, goggles, gloves and dust masks should be carried and worn as necessary to prevent injury and ease the effects of the smoke, heat, dust and burning embers you may encounter. For your health and comfort when working in hot conditions, you should wear the recommended minimum clothing underneath personal protective clothing. Ensure that it is loose fitting and made of natural fibres. Heat and hard work can bring on dehydration. To avoid this, you should commence your fluid intake prior to starting work and continue to drink water, alternated with electrolyte replacement drinks, during your shift. When responding to the fire, seat belts must be worn and helmets safely stowed or held. Wear approved personal protective clothing and equipment. Drink water alternated with electrolytes. Fasten seat belts and stow helmets. The first crew leader or officer to arrive at the fire will initially act as the incident controller and establish a control point from where the firefight will be coordinated. The incident controller will size up the fire and provide a situation report to the radio control station. Come on you guys, we're doing the briefing. Let's go. Incoming crews will be briefed so that they know their task, the radio channel to be used, the method of attack and any fire ground safety issues. As the incident grows in size and more tankers are needed, the control point may become the operations point. As strike teams arrive from the staging area, they will be checked in and briefed using the SMEAX format prior to their deployment to the far front. Take your strike team down, Yep. tag onto the back of Clombinane and Wandong on the eastern flank. I have another strike team coming in, which will put onto the western flank. Each firefighter must know they are responsible for their own safety and the safety of fellow crew members. Know who you report to. Be briefed on your task. Look out for your safety and those you are working with. How a grass fire is attacked will depend on the combined effects of fuel, weather and topography. When fighting a fast moving grass fire, you need to take each of these factors into account so that you will know what the fire is doing and what it is likely to do. The strategy and tactics chosen to attack the fire will depend on its rate of spread, flame height, fire intensity, current and expected weather conditions, access to the fire and available firefighting resources. Methods used to attack a grass fire may include direct attack, parallel attack or indirect attack. A direct attack means working directly on the fire edge, on the head or flanks. Direct attack is generally used and most successful where flame height and fire intensity are low. Two forms of direct attack include a head attack, which involves attacking the fire directly at the head and continuing to knock down the flanks by working towards the point of origin. And a flank attack, which involves attacking the fire directly on the flanks. This may be carried out by working from the point of origin towards the head of the fire with the aim of pinching it in. 
When carrying out a direct attack, take particular care when working along fingers, as these may quickly join up. Watch out for any spotting activity, as you may become trapped between the main fire and the spot fire. You must always know the part of a fire you're working on, and be constantly on the lookout for any change in wind direction, as this can quickly turn a flank fire into a head fire and threaten your safety. The parallel attack method is used for low and moderate intensity fires. Generally, a mineral earth control line is constructed parallel to the fire as close as possible to the fire edge. A broad range of equipment may be used to do this, including graders, bulldozers, disc plows, or other earth moving machinery. When the control line is completed, fuel between the main fire and the control line may be burnt out under close supervision. This usually occurs on a flank working from the point of origin using the blacked out edge as your anchor point. Control line construction must stay ahead of any burning out activities. You must understand that the further you work away from the fire edge, the greater the personal risk if the fire changes direction or fire intensity increases. The indirect attack method requires working from a control line. This will be located some distance from the fire perimeter and may be constructed using machinery or it may include a natural feature like a river, creek or washaway. Backburning may then be used to burn out fuel between the control line and the approaching fire front. Backburning is potentially hazardous and needs experience, knowledge and skill to achieve a successful outcome. Backburning will only be carried out when authorised by the incident controller and supervised up and down the chain of command as appropriate. RAS fire attack methods depend on the combined effects of fuel, weather, topography, firefighter safety, rate of spread, flame height, fire intensity, access to the fire and available resources. An anchor point is defined as an advantageous location from which a fire line can be constructed. It is used to minimise the possibility of being outflanked by a fire while the line is being constructed. An anchor point may be an existing road or track. Alternatively, the burnt ground can provide an immediate anchor point as crews progress along the blacked out fire edge. Know your anchor points and have two escape routes. Fast moving grass fires can be difficult to control. In extreme wildfire conditions, you may need to take a defensive strategy and move into asset protection to minimise loss of life and property. This may take many forms, including protecting homes against ember attack from an approaching fire front. In these conditions, the building may also provide protection until the fire front passes. A line of tankers working together provides an efficient means of suppressing long fire edges, provided they work as a team. One or two tankers may commence the firefight, and as other tankers in the form of strike teams arrive, they join in. When conducting a direct attack on the head or flanks, the crew on the front tanker conducts the initial attack using two nozzles. The forward firefighter directs a jet stream at the base of the flames along the grass fire edge. This gives maximum water penetration to the seat of the fire where it will have maximum knockdown effect. Taking care not to hose burning fuel into unburnt fuel. The second firefighter, using a fog nozzle set at a 30 degree spray angle, follows up approximately 3 metres behind the first nozzle, completing knockdown. This second nozzle may also be used for immediate fog protection to the crew and truck should radiant heat levels suddenly increase. The second tanker follows up, extinguishing any spots missed by the first tanker, using one or two nozzles as necessary. The third, fourth and fifth tankers follow as a reserve. When the first tanker reaches low water level, it peels off. The second tanker then takes over the initial attack and the third tanker crew steps up to knock down any relights. Additional tankers are deployed to move up and support these vehicles as they peel off to refill with water. There are a limited number of tankers fitted with the Magnum nozzle. This is used to knock down a grass fire edge in conjunction with the crew using handheld nozzles. 
In any grass fire attack, experienced drivers should be at the wheel as they play an important role in successful firefighting operations. To achieve this, the driver needs to see the front hose stream, assess its effectiveness and adjust the speed of the vehicle accordingly. By keeping the window open, the driver can also feel radiant heat levels and adjust the distance from the fire edge to protect the crew. Limited visibility due to smoke and dust can make driving difficult, so a safe distance between tankers must be maintained. This will also make it easier for any relights to be seen and extinguished by the crew. Where practical, work from the black and activate front sprays as required. Whether to drive on the black or unburnt ground will depend on many factors, which may include fuel, weather, topography, wind speed and direction, fire behaviour and intensity, and crew comfort in smoke, ash and dust. Whenever driving in unburnt grassland, debris may accumulate under your vehicle or on the radiator. This should be closely monitored and removed to avoid the danger of your vehicle catching fire or overheating. Use gates where possible, or if fences need to be cut to gain access, cut the wires in a staggered formation so that they can be temporarily rejoined to keep stock in. Hazards for drivers include limited visibility in long grass, which may hide rocks, stumps, potholes and washaways. All slopes and rough ground should be negotiated with extreme care to avoid injury to the crew and damage to the vehicles. Tankers work in line for effective knockdown. Direct water along the fire edge. Use fog for crew protection. Monitor water levels. Avoid working in heat, smoke and dust. Use experienced drivers. Avoid hazards. Roadside reserves in heavily timbered areas pose additional risks to your safety. In these areas, you may need to work on the ground away from tankers using hose lays or hand tools to obtain best results. Fuel loads on roadsides are often higher than adjoining grasslands and fire behaviour can change dramatically with increasing radiant heat levels. Trees may also be set alight, creating additional hazards through spotting activity and falling limbs. These can continue to fall for many days after the fire has passed. Look up and maintain a close watch on burning or falling trees and limbs. Trees threaten your safety. Watch out for falling limbs, spotting activity, increased radiant heat, increased smoke. Stay well clear and upslope of dangerous trees. Water is an important tool when used for attacking grass fires and it must be used effectively and efficiently. To maintain a successful grass fire attack with tankers, an adequate supply of water needs to be accessed within a short turnaround time. Dams, tanks, channels and natural watercourses can provide a ready source of water. If quick fill pumps are set up at these points, they need to be clearly identified. Use water effectively and efficiently. Identify water points. Firebombing aircraft can effectively extinguish flames along a running fire edge. Aircraft provide additional support to ground crews by targeting hotspots and reporting on fire activity. You need to be aware of aircraft operating nearby. Listen for any sirens that may indicate water or foam drop and take precautions by moving out of firebombing areas. You should know your tanker aerial identification number in the event that you are called from an aircraft to move away from a firebombing area. Look out for aircraft working in your area. Know your aerial ID number. The use of Class A foam can improve the effectiveness of water. You need to understand when, where and how to use it and what proportioning rates are used to produce the best results for variations in fuel type, quantity, size and arrangement. Class A foam solution 
provides for quick wetting of grass fields to attack and knock down flames along a fire edge. A conventional jet spray or fog nozzle should be used for foam solution application using the same techniques as for water during knockdown operations. For all applications using solution, it is proportioned at between 0.1% and 0.2%. Where timbered areas need to be protected, a foam blanket can be applied by a foam making branch pipe at a higher concentration of approximately 0.3%. This aerated foam solution makes white bubbly foam that sticks to vertical surfaces like trees and other vegetation. Water that drains from the foam is absorbed into A-class fuels, making them too wet to burn. A simple rule when using aerated Class A foam is, wetter is better. Class A foam is also effective for mopping up to penetrate and cool smouldering fuels such as cowpats, tussocks, stumps and logs. Foam application can make for slippery conditions on the ground, so you need to take care to avoid falls. Class A foam must not be used near waterways or dams. Restrictions also apply on organic farms and water catchment areas. Class A foam improves the effectiveness of water. Solution is applied by conventional nozzles. As foam, wetter is better. Minimise environmental impact. Manage human health and safety. Users to be competently trained. After the initial knockdown of flames, it is vital that thorough mopping up and blacking out operations are undertaken. In grass fires, firefighters need to achieve blackout of the burnt ground in order to prevent any relights. Crews start blacking out from the point of origin and work systematically along the perimeter of the fire, ensuring that all areas near the unburnt edge are totally blacked out. When this is achieved, you start working in from the perimeter. Tree roots, stumps, grass tussocks and animal dung that are near the edge of the fire need to be dug up or turned over and completely blacked out. Using the back of the hand with caution, feel for hot spots and break up any dense concentrations of hot fuel. Mopping up and blackout operations can only be thoroughly achieved by crews working on the ground. Use rake hose, axes and shovels in combination with water to assist in this work. In grass fires where potential relights may occur, a mineral earth control line may be constructed around the fire using heavy machinery. Remember any relights can undo a lot of good work. Crews will need to continue patrolling the fire until it is declared safe. Work from an anchor point. Work in from the outer edge. Use hand tools to assist breakup of hot fuel. Best results working from the ground. May require mineral earth control line. Firefighting can be hazardous. So remember that firefighter safety takes priority over all other fire suppression activities. Be briefed on your allocated task and know whom to report to. Changes in fuel, weather and topography are factors that may dramatically alter fire behaviour, intensity, direction and speed. Constantly monitor water levels and maintain a safety reserve. If conditions deteriorate or become unsafe, you should use planned escape routes. Work from an anchor point. Working under or around treed areas increases the risks to your safety. Take care when working near heavy equipment and farm machinery, as you may not be seen or heard by an operator. Work within the communications plan to ensure clear communications up and down the chain of command and with each other. Report any issues affecting or threatening safety to your supervisor. Although grass fires may be fast moving and rapidly change direction, the principles outlined in this video will allow you to operate safely, effectively and efficiently on the fire ground. <laughs>